attention. I'm a visitor from far away. I came back this afternoon, but remember we were together this morning? But this afternoon, we're going to do something a little bit different. And we're going to be talking about something and engaging in a little exercise because of the fact that, well, I got to tell you, let's start this way. Let's start this. Let's talk about something that happened in our country on July the 4th, July 4th, what? 1776. 1776. Man, you earn a quarter. Okay? You said 1776. All right? You see that man over there? Get it from him because I don't have one right now. All right? You earn a quarter. 1776. You see, what happened before 1776? Teachers make it very difficult for us because they use all of this big language that they have to so that we can learn. And it becomes difficult for us to really understand exactly what really they make reference to when they speak about July 4th, what? 1776. And that's a long time ago, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Is it? Yes. Sir. Is it really? Do you agree with him? That July 4th, 1776 is a long time ago? Do you agree? Well, let's see. Do you have a abuelita or abuelito? If your abuelito or abuelita is 70 years old, all you need to do is take him or her, two more abuelitos, and guess what? You're back to July the 4th, 1776. That's not so far, is it? Huh? You take about three and a half persons my age, just me, two more persons, and we're back to the time we're talking about. But you see, what happened before that, July 4th, 1776, and that was a letter that they wrote on July 4th, 1776. They call it something else, but that was a letter that they wrote. What happened before they wrote the letter what? is that in this land of yours and mine, really including Corpus Christi, Texas, I guess, legally speaking, things weren't the same. Things were just not the same. And, and what, what really had taken place is that this king from way over there decided that he was going to come and take this land. And he himself was not here. But his soldiers were here, and they were what we call policemen now. And his governors were here, and they're what we would call little kings and things like that. And, and you see, all of this happened because of the fact that there was a king. And the king sent his people, and the king governed over this land of the earth and mine. Interesting thing about this, oh, let's see. This is King Larry. So we got to make King Larry look like a king. So to make King Larry look like a king, we're going to make King Larry look like a king. And he had a robe. Had a robe. Oh, and he had a soldier. What is a soldier's name? Rene. Rene. So Rene is right here. If you would please, King, if you please, sir. After all, you are the king. Would you please put this over yourself, sir? This is King Larry. I introduce him to you. And he had soldiers. And he had people over here in this land of years and mine. So funny thing about King Larry and kings in those days, before July 4th, 1776, just three willitos, you know, ago. He was king, and his grandfather was king, and his great-grandfather was king, and his great-great-grandfather was king, you know something else? His son was going to be king, and his grandson was going to be king. That's sort of the way things happen, you know? Whether people liked it or not, that's the way things took place. And he actually was in this land of yours and mine. Not physically, but through his people. They call them governors. Actually, they were little kings. And he had soldiers that came from England that were called the king's soldiers and the like. And, and before this particular date that we talked about, in which that letter was written, you know, things were just not the same as you and I know them. As a matter of fact, they were very, what's going on over here? What, what is going on over here? I beg your pardon, what's going on? What's that fellow doing over there? Look at this, Dean. I want you to look at this. You see it. Stay, stay abreast here. What's he doing over there? Mario's just reading the paper. <laughs> doing what? Corpus Christi Collar. Corpus Christi Collar? 
We can't have anybody reading the book of Sweet Pea Potter. There's only one newspaper that can be read, and that's the King's newspaper. You know what would happen? If we let them go around, go, go around and write anything that they want and publishing their own things, you know, they may say bad things about you. And that's no good. We can't have that. I tell you what. What? That's, that's wrong. My that's what? That's read. what? It's wrong. I heard it. And I heard it. But I tell you, uh, we don't care how wrong it is because a king soldier is going to, going to take that man into custody and put him in the dungeon. Go take him into custody. Now, we'll see where he's going to go. Talk about that. I guess what you're talking about is the freedom of press and stuff like that. Not in my kingdom, fellow. Not in King Larry's kingdom. Not in King Larry's kingdom. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, what's going on over here now? Jeffrey and I are going to church. Who? Jeffrey. What church? The Baptist church. Baptist Are you serious? Hey, the Baptist church is not the king's church. Well, you cannot go to the Baptist church. What? We want to go to the Baptist church. Well, you can't go to whatever. Wait a minute. Hold on just a minute. There's only one church that you can worship, and that's a king's church. And if it's not the king's church, you're not going to worship any place. And you, you insist on doing your thing? Well, I'll we well, tell you what, then, soldier, take him away, too. We'll see what's going to happen here. And I'll tell you, it's hard to be a king. It really is hard to be a king because you can take the Bible. What? Are you serious? Take the Bible away from him. That's not going to happen here. Listen, are you going to bother me all afternoon? Are you going to bother King Larry all afternoon? No, sir. Lamar just going to go to school. You know, he's tired of talking. King Larry is tired of talking. Why the hell? Where's he going? He's going to school. School, like you mean, like Cunningham, stuff like that? Lamar has a right to education. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right to what? Education. What's he going to go to school for? Become a knowledgeable person to make a profession. No, no. Knowledge for what? A profession? Become somebody? Wait a minute, King. They go around going to school, and you know what happens? Then they're going to learn things, and then they're going to know more than you and I. And then they're going to start trying to tell us what to do. We can't allow that. No, sir. No, sir. You cannot go to school. Mr. Soldier, take him away. I'll tell you what. Put this one to harvest the, the fields so that we can get food for the kingdom. Away he goes. Well, it's hard to be a king, isn't it? Huh? It really is. It really is hard. Hey, are you going to be this way all afternoon long? Can we not rest? What's his problem? Game was going to vote. To where? To vote. It's time for a new king. You mean like 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 vote for her, like for a candidate? It's time for a whole new process. You mean like uh, like for Gonzalez or Capel or people like that, stuff like that? Exactly. Huh? I'm tired of this. You mean like for people to run it? <laughs> you are kidding, aren't you? We're gonna, we're you gonna wait a minute, wait a minute. You are kidding. Something. Nobody ever votes for a king. Nobody. I said his father was king and his grandfather was king and his children are going to be king. Nobody votes here. You mean you would vote for somebody to remove the king? That's exactly what our plan is. Are you insisting on that too? Are you insisting on that? Yeah. Okay, soldier, take them away too. We'll handle him very well. We'll take care of things and we'll take care of things very, very well. You know, funny thing, isn't it? But you can be king, and you get all of these people that come up with these, all of these ideas about wanting to do this and that. It's hard. It really is hard. And then, and then I tell you, they don't let a king do what he wants with them. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Come here, Mr. Soldier. Uh, you grab that. You can't take that away. What do you mean you can't take He's that away? He's got some private things in there. Private things. So what? want anybody to look at. What, what do you mean? You can't talk about you talk about searches and seizures. You can't search it. Now why why can't we? You just can't. What what do you mean you can't? Take it away from him. Take it away from him. I suppose you're gonna have to just hold it right there. Hold it right there. The next thing you're gonna be asking for is you gotta go to a judge and get a process and get permission to search. And that's the next thing they're gonna talk about. I'll tell you what, you think that it what's in there. One See what's in there. In this See what is in there. Was Listen, look know. at this king. You having a good time, people? <laughs> if I didn't sit there like you are, I would do. You know? What's in there? Look at that. I'll put the same. We're gonna try him for defiance. We want to try. What? We want a jury. What? A jury. I am the jury. The king is the jury. <laughs> <laughs>
Fellow students, we are the jury. Stand right there, fellow. I'll tell you what. Next thing you want, you want to trial? Trial. Or evidence? Huh? Here is the evidence. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. Take <laughs> them away. Just three abuelitos, abuelitas ago, a little bit more than that, before July 4th, 1776, it wasn't exactly like that, but a lot like that, a lot like that. And people got together, just like at Cunningham, and all the people who were here, and they, and they started talking to each other. They said, hey, this is becoming a little difficult to tolerate. I mean, this thing about us not being able to go to whatever church we want to, about not being able to go to school, about not being able to decide who our leaders are going to be, this is getting a little old. After all, there's something special about everybody that's born, because you see, everybody that's born here is, is sort of pretty much the same. I mean, everybody has gifts and talents, and there's something to be respected. So they got together. Before July 4th, 17, what? 76. Did I tell you a quarter? That man didn't give you a quarter? Well, don't vote for him if he didn't give you a quarter. All right? Somebody owes you a quarter, and we're good for it before you leave, all right? You be sure to call it to our attention. So they got together, and they said, well, goodness gracious, how are we going to do this? We don't like what's going on. It's not right. It really is not right. What are we going to do? And so what they did is they wrote a letter. And then this letter, they effectively told King Larry, we have had it. As a matter of fact, King Larry, we don't much want to be under you anymore. As a matter of fact, we, you keep your thing and you leave us alone. And so what they did is they, in effect, wrote him this letter on July 4th, what? 1770. That's the important. 17 what? 17. All right, for another quarter, what, what do we call that letter? Declaration of Independence. You can only get one quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Declaration of Independence. This Declaration of Independence, all they said and all they did was they said, look, King, we have it. But we no longer want to be part of it. We, we want to be free, you know, and then they call it a declaration, which is just a statement of independence, which means a letter of freedom. And in this letter of freedom, they said a lot of things. The one thing, you may be seated, you may be seated also. Thank you, Georgia. They said a lot of things. They wrote this letter, and what they said, it was sort of like this, even though they don't describe it this way, this, uh, this way. they said, Dear King, you know, all of these things that have been happening here, we, we really don't think is right. We really don't think is right because of what you and I were talking about a little earlier. And, and, and we just, you know, we tried, uh, we, 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 we made efforts to see if we could get together so that somehow or another all of us could agree as to how we want to be governed. Govern only simply means, you know, the, the people who are going to tell you what you can and cannot do and things like that. And, and uh, we, we don't want that anymore. And we're sorry, but this is it. But they did a lot of other things in there. They, they, they emphasized the fact that human beings are something special, something very important. And, and you shouldn't have people doing like they were doing things to them you know, from England and from the mother country and the like. And so in writing this letter of freedom, this Declaration of Independence, does anybody have orders to give these guys? They may sue us if we don't, you know, so give them water before we forget, all right? Give each one of these a quarter each. By the way, you have to, uh, you did find out I was a United States District Judge, you have to report that on your income tax, fellas. <laughs> Whatever it's worth. You may not know what that is, but someday you're going to find out. So after writing this letter, you see, then they had a very serious problem. The reason they had a very serious problem is because of the fact that they no longer had a king. They no longer had somebody over them. They no longer had what? Government. Like you and I know the mayor and the city commission and the governor and the legislature and the president and, and Congress. They didn't have any of that because they had already told their leader, 
we don't want any more of you. And so they were in somewhat of a difficult situation. And it was rather difficult because of the fact that although it's only three grandfathers ago, there were no cars. There were no trains. There were no airplanes. Matter of fact, they didn't have ways to get around unless it was water because they had boats. And, and, and they didn't have the conveniences that we have today. You don't know, like when they tell you to go home and do some homework and you go to your house and you put the light bulb on and you sit at the desk and you start doing your homework? They didn't have any of that. They had horses and carriages and things like that. And one of them would be in Pennsylvania and another one would be in New York and another one in Washington and another one in Boston. And it would take them days to see each other. And it was important because they were trying to figure out what to do. So for 11 years, what did they say that they won? 1776? Huh? What's 11 years later? Not for a quarter, Jesus. What's 11 years later? Huh? 1787. 1787? Boy, you're going to make it anything you want. That's a good answer. 11 plus 76 is 87. 88. Give me back my quarter. Give me back my quarter. 1787. This time, they wrote a longer letter. I mean, not a real, real, real long letter, but they wrote a longer letter. And this one came out in September of 1789 for a very special gift. What letter did those people write in September of 1787? Big part? Constitution. What is the Constitution? What is it? The right to What is it? Rights. Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights? Is that all it is? Um, what did you call it? The Constitution. That's the letter they wrote 11 years later? What? God, golly, you know, they, they were like teachers. I just call it a letter. Instead, they call it a Constitution. What's a Constitution? Right. Like a Bill of Rights? Not bad. Serve something. I'll tell you what, that's a lot better than a quarter. It costs you a lot more to buy one of those than that quarter. And what is the Constitution? The right to bear arms. The right to bear arms? I don't know. That's the Constitution? I mean, that's all it says? Freedom of speech. Oh, yes. Freedom of speech. Freedom of religion. Freedom of religion? Is that all it says? Freedom of the schools and all that. And all of that. Freedom of the schools and all that. In other words, freedom. 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 Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You remember when we said that we're going to split the Hey, hey, remember one problem that they had is remember that they were used to King Larry's father being king and the children being king and all that other stuff. Freedom of vote. Freedom of vote. Freedom of vote. Is that one thing they did? What's the most important thing they did in this letter? Right to vote. That's right to vote came later. <laughs> What's the most important thing that they did? What? The Bill of Rights? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech? You know what? They got together and then they started to talk. They, they kept on talking and talking because it is, they, they didn't want things to be like they were. So they said, for one thing, we want to pick our king. We want to be able to vote for our king. Do you believe that? Our king is President Clinton. Why don't they call him king? <coughs> That's what they did. See, they got together and they said, we want to be able to decide who the people like our king are going to be. That's what they did. You know, 11 years later in 1787, and then it's something else. And something else is this, they say. Well, we don't want our king to be called king. So what do they call him? President. President. And boy, that president is really powerful, right? They like a king? Really? No? No? He what? He ruled the country? Is that president that they, why, why do they call him president? Why do they say we want to call him president? Why do they call him king? Because he was the president of the country. Big pardon? Hey, why not call him king? That's what they were used to. He was going to govern the country. Yeah, he's not there forever, ever, ever. 
like his kids. He's not there for what? Forever. And ever? What does that mean? Like, it's just like you're born over like I like it used to be, right? Okay, they did something else. They said, well, you know, we're not going to call him king. And the reason we're not going to call him king is because, remember, we were upset with the king. And then if we call him king, he's going to behave like a king. And we want to be able to vote him in and vote him out. Vote him in and vote him out. And, and you, you think the president has a deal, a lot of power? No. Huh? No? Well, who has powers if he does? Oh. Who? Called who? Who? What is Congress? Who is that congressman? Uh, Solomon Ortiz. Solomon Ortiz? Is that his name? You know, I don't know whether your answers have all been correct or not, but you've answered enough times to go on something so you get a book. You get a constitution. Right! That's what they said. We said, we don't want the president that we're going to let to be there forever. So he has to run every four years and something else. We don't want him to have the same what? Power as a king. The king could do anything he wanted to. So they said, we want the people to have a How'd they do that? They it's established, democracy. You said? Democracy. Congress. Now, what's Congress made up of? Huh? Republicans and Democrats. Independents. <laughs> Black lovers. Not a bad, not a bad call, shit. Big shot, bad deal, not bad. Huh? What's Congress made out of? You said senators, governors, and congressmen. Governors? <laughs> you know, you know, I want my quarter back. To you know, that, that's a bad answer. All right. Congress is made up of Congressman Ortiz, the House of Representatives, right? And then, excuse me, and senators. What they said they wanted to do <coughs> so that the president would never, never behave like a king. They said, he can't pass any laws. Matter of fact, he can't even tax people. There's a lot of things that the president can't do. It all has to come out, come from Congress. And who gets to elect presidents? <coughs> people. And who elects the, the members of the House of Representatives? President. Who? No, the people. And who elects the senators? So what do we call this thing that happened in 1787 through this book, this thing, this letter of what we now call a constitution? Beg your pardon? What do we call what happened? Where they said, in effect, you and I get to choose what's going to happen to us because we get to select our leaders. Now it's mayor and city commissioners and school board members and governors and legislators Presidents and Congress. What do you call that process? Voting. What did you say? Democracy. Now, what does democracy mean, King Larry? When you decide who's going to govern you, right? When you decide who your king is going to be, and your other king, and your sub kings, and the people who are, who are always over you, whether it's in the city of Corpus Christi, in the state, and in Washington, right? Okay? Democracy. You know, there's a very interesting thing about that. For the first time, how long has the world been here? <coughs> now, the world has been here a long time. That's not three wellitos ago, not three grandfathers ago. Believe it or not, the world has been here millions and millions of years. And for how long it ever been, this is the first time, the first time in the whole history of the world, the people got together and established a government of what we call now a democracy, where they elected who their leaders were going to be. And, and this happened less than three grandparents ago, less than three Willitas ago. And it happened through what? What do we call this letter? The Constitution. Of the United States. Right. And then you know that they, they, they said, well, for one thing, we're going to elect our president. We're not going to call him king. And the reason we're not going to call him king is because then he's going to think, or she, someday there is going to be a she, all right? He or she is going to think that they have the same power as a king. And we don't want that. And, and then they establish all of these other, all of these other uh, uh, powers of government, Congress, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and then they made judges. And what they said about judges, they say, look, if this 
congressman of yours, and this senator of yours, and this president of yours tries to pass a law, and and it's not not authorized or not part of the Constitution, then we're going to make judges so that they can say you can't do it. That's what judges do. Besides this morning, you know, crime people and all of those other things, judges interpret the Constitution and they will say to the President and Congress, can't do it, can't do it, because it did not conform to what you're authorized to do. And that's what they did in the Constitution. You know, the one they wrote in 1787. But then something happened two years later. Now, what happened two years later? You were telling me all. What? No, not declaration. You called it. What happened two years later? The act of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, and what's that? Uh, the right to bear arms, the right to vote, freedom of speech, freedom to choose religion. Yeah, what's that? Well, the rights. Yeah, how many of them are there? Eight. How many? Eight. Twelve. Eight. Twelve. Eight. Eight. Ten. How many? Ten. 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 Who said ten? I how many have? How many we have? You agree with ten? Huh? You guess? Well, guy, your guess got you a dime. You can't give me more than that. A dime? All right. All right. The Bill of Rights. Two years later, <coughs> that's when they said, uh oh. We really, really want to be sure that that president and that Congress and that Senate will never make us go through what the king used to make us go through. And that's when they adopted the first 10 changes that you and I know of the Bill of Rights. For one thing, they said exactly what you saw just a few minutes ago. The freedom of press. The free, what's freedom of press? Press. Oh, that um, they can run a story in the news without being that you can write whatever you want to, right? Uh-huh. Okay? And what about that? Somebody said the right to vote. What does that mean? Big part choose. What does it mean? Who do you want to write to Congress, right? Right? You get to decide who you're going to vote for, right? That's, that's, a, that's a right to vote. What else was in the Bill of Rights? Uh, the right, right to bear arms. What does that mean? No, you can have a rifle. Huh? You agree with that? Yeah. No? Yeah. You agree with it? No. What about in, in those good bill of rights as to what you saw here a few moments ago where the king soldier took that person's satchel away, briefcase away? Oh, oh the invasion of privacy. Right to privacy? Right to Okay. Right to Okay. Right to be free from what? Searches and seizures. Without any cause at all. Right. What about the, 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 the fact that we had a trial? What about, what about the fact that we had a trial? Where is that? Where is that? You are judged by your peers. Big word? No, it's judged by your peers. It's judged not by your religion. Well, we had a trial, didn't we? You saw the king, right? He said, you're guilty, guilty, guilty. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody brought any evidence that showed that. And that what we had? Yeah. As a matter of fact, they didn't even have any reason to accuse him of anything, right? Any sentence. Okay? Well, what you find in your Bill of Rights is exactly what you've been talking about. The freedom of press, the right to vote, the right to bear arms. And then when we come to searches and seizures, it means people can't go into your house for no reason at all or go into your car for no reason at all without first going to a judge and saying, Judge, we have reasons to believe that this person has some bad stuff in there. This morning we talked about what? Cocaine. Yeah. All right? Think like that. Then they went a little farther and then they said, all right, not only is the person going to be entitled to a trial, but they're going to be entitled to a trial before a jury. What's a jury? You are judged by your You are judges and, um, um, Okay, you keep saying peers. Who are peers? Huh? Make a pardon? Uh, oh, other citizens. What did you say? Other the people what? The people around you? I guess that's just about as good a definition as I ever heard of peers. Other citizens? Other citizens? The people around you? The citizens around you? Yeah. Okay, 
And then they said, you can also be entitled to a trial in even civil cases. And in the Bill of Rights, what you find is that what they tried to do in the Bill of Rights, which are the first ten amendments to the Constitution, is they wanted to make sure that never, never, never again in the United States of America would we ever witness what we saw the king and the king's soldier do in front of us this afternoon. That's what they tried to do in the first ten amendments to the Bill of Rights. And ever since, that's the way it's been. Ever since, that's the way it's been. And I'll tell you something else that's very important for us to know, that since we did all of this, people have made great sacrifices because they consider it to be so important. Why is it important to you? Why is this important to you? Because made a choice. Because you had a freedom of what? Make a choice. You had a freedom of choice? Can you be whoever you want to be and whatever you want to be? Why? Because of this, because of thing, right? I mean, he didn't want to let us do all of that, did he? He never let us want to do that. He never wanted us to be that, right? And he never wanted us to go ahead and enjoy our freedom in the life. You know why all of this happened? This happened because of this little longer letter called the Constitution of the United States. And it is the first one that was ever written in that same world we were talking about earlier. And, and, and then, since then, a lot of countries have said, that's a pretty good idea. That's a pretty good idea for us to have a government where we decide what our destiny is going to be. And we elect our kings or presidents or whatever we want to call it. And, and this is what the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights did. So next time that somebody talks to you about the Declaration of Independence, think in terms of a letter. A letter written to the king. And then after that, when somebody talks to you about the Constitution, think in terms of another letter. A little longer letter. And a little long, a letter that tried to do everything that, that they wanted to do because they wrote the first letter. To establish a government by which we would be able to decide what our destiny is was going to be. And is this important? It is absolutely important because what that means to, to you is this. You can be and do whatever you want to do. So long as it's not in violation of what? Other people's rights. What's a violation of other people's rights? Violate laws. Like that young man we saw this morning. That's a violation of what? Other people's rights. But otherwise you can be and do whatever you want to. So a thought, right? If this is so, if this is so, and if they really believe that up here all of us are pretty much the same, and all of us can accomplish anything else anybody can do, then it's really not up to anybody else as to what we do in our lives, is it? Like, for example, finishing Cunningham, and finishing high school, and going to college, and becoming somebody, who's that up to? Is that important? So to you, isn't it? And all of that's possible because of two letters. A letter written July 4th, what? 1776. And a longer letter written in September of 1787. Guaranteed in 1789 by the Bill of Rights. And that's what the Constitution is all about. And next time, then, and as we go through the process of getting educated, like when we start taking government classes, and the teachers start talking about the Declaration of Independence, and uh, or next July the 4th when we hear firecrackers and all of these other things and uh, you know eat hot dogs and the like don't forget that all of this happened because at one time there was a king who behaved like King Larry and he didn't think we were very important and that's all that this is all about do you have any questions Any questions? Good. Did you get your quarter? Oh, yeah. Did you get your quarter? Yep. Did some of you get a book? Huh? You guys deserve a book. You're welcome to shop. Hey, I'm expecting you two guys to consider law. I'm expecting you to consider law, too. All right. Any other questions? All right. If there are no other questions, I think this concludes this. Uh,
same time as we take our trip. But for this journey that you and I are going to take, all right, how old are we now? About 14, 15? I want you to think and dream. And the first thing I want you to do is think in terms of being 23 years old. Like the guy we saw this morning was 23 years old. That's less than 10 years from now. So you're going to be 23 years old. All right? And then to take this trip also, it's going to be necessary for us to be single. Because you see, when you get married, that's a great state. You know, you get married, you have children, that's good stuff. However, when you do those things, if you have children, you're restrained. There's a lot of things you wish you could do that you'll not be able to do. So for our journey, we're going to be 23 years old, we're going to be single, all right? Now I have a question for you. For this particular journey, when you're 23 years old and you're single, are you going to want to live at home? No. No. Why not no? I mean, why no? Live at home. Yeah, at home your parents? No. Do you agree? Do you agree? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you know, if we're going to be at home, the problem with being at home is that they're always telling you what to do and what not to do, and they're drags, right? Big part? And they want you to pay bills. Everybody agree we're not going to stay at home at age 23 we're single? Everybody generally agree? All right, I'm going to take you up on that. So for our journey, we're 23 years old, we are single, and we're not going to stay at home. And the reason we're not staying at home is because of the fact, and remember, if we're 15, that's only about eight years from now. That's not a long time from now. And we're not going to stay at home because of the fact that parents do interfere with freedom, don't they? They always tell you what to do and they bug you and all these other things. So we're not going to be at home. Got a problem for our journey. If we're 23 years old, we're single, and we're going to take, we're, we're going to go on a journey, and we're not going to be at home. We've got to find a place to live. Because we don't want to be with our parents. We've got to find a place to live. So my first question to you is, think big. Where? Would you like to live? What kind of house? What kind of house would you like? Think big, green. Mansion. Who said a mansion? That is a good idea. The only thing wrong with living in a mansion like the one we see on television is that they'll cost you about $15,000 a month. What, what would you like? Hey, a big apartment, a big apartment like uh, next to the water, okay, a big apartment next to the water, I don't know what they cost here in Corpus Christi, but remember I told you this morning, I'm from Brownsville next to Padre Island, near South, uh, South Padre Island, over there, and those big apartments, do anything like the teachers have, with jacuzzis, and air conditioning, and all this other stuff, tell you what, that's a little bit prohibitive, because those cost about eight or nine hundred dollars a month, is that fair? So the apartment is out. How about a house? Want a house? Eh? Dos cameras? Two bedrooms? Brick? Eh? Brick? Don't talk so much, man. Okay? Brick? Okay. Air conditioning? Okay. Uh, one garage or two garages? Brick? New? Okay. Can't do it, man, because that costs about $1,600 a month. <laughs> but remember, you're the ones who said, we're going to be 23 years old, and we don't want to be at home because of the fact that parents are a problem. 
So we're going to find a place for you to live. Because after all, we want to enjoy our freedom. We're 23 years old. We're, 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 we're single. We're full of energy. So this is what we're going to do. And this is why I came from Brownville, Texas. All the rest I did today doesn't count. I came just for this exercise. I'm going to find you a house. And this is a house I'm going to find you because we've got to find something we can afford. All right? We're going to get a used trailer house. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Some of those trailer houses, some of those trailer houses are pretty good. As a matter of fact, some of them have two or three bedrooms. But this one has to be used because you watch on television and they say so much and don't believe that. Don't believe that. The only thing, when you get something used, like a used car, a used refrigerator, or in this case a used trailer, you see, banks, they won't own any money for a long time. So our used trailer house, our used trailer house is, is we're going to have to pay off in about two years, and it's going to be pretty hard for us to get a trailer house that's not going to cost us $250 a month for the next two years. So this is housing. Do you want furniture? Of course. Right? I mean, what good is a house without furniture? And do you get any winter tourists here in Corpus Christi? You know what they are? The Libiajitos and the Libiajitas? Huh? Go down in the valley, they come in big numbers. Big numbers. And, and they stay with us all winter long. Because they're from up north and it gets real cold. So I tell you, you know what it costs to furnish a house? No. What would you like in your house? You want a refrigerator? Huh? You want a stove? You want a stove? You want a bed? You want a sofa? Right. You want a, you want, you want, uh, yeah. Entertainment? If you want a television set? Well, I tell you what, if you were to buy a, a house, uh, a furniture house, in other words, furniture for a new house, two bedrooms, if you were to buy a new, we're talking about a bed, a sofa, a stove, a refrigerator, and the other thing that goes with a house. I suppose it would cost us $15,000, teachers, is that fair? $15,000? And you see, when you buy furniture, it's not like buying a house. So you got to pay that pretty quick, and that would be $500. So I tell you, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to wait and see where some viejito, viejita dies. That's a bad thing. But if there are people live over there up north, and we're going to buy their furniture. We're going to buy their furniture, but they have to get rid of it. So what they're going to do is they're going to sell it to us, and we got to pay it within 18 months, and we're going to pay it $150. $150. But look what we have. We've got a house, and we've got furniture. Do we want air conditioning? Of course. OK, a little unit of air conditioning costs us $25. Now, when you buy a house, you also have to pay utilities. You know, water, gas, electricity. And I tell you what, even for a used trailer house, I'm going to do you a favor. It's going to be $50. But look, we are 23 years old, we are unmarried, and we have a pad. We have a house. And in this house, right, this house is fully furnished. But look what it's going to cost us. This is a used house. What does it come to? Right. $450 a month, but we have a house. Now, do we want transportation? Oh, yes. Huh? What kind of car do we want? Low rider. What? A Porsche? Super Sport? Super Sport? A Super Sport like, like a Camaro? Huh? Super Sport? What would you like? A Lexus. Oh, a Lexus. Mustang. You? You? Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, let's listen over here. Just a simple what, please? Just something that'll get me around. Just something that'll get me around. I'm not going to forget you. Uh, I don't know what a Lexus cost. Hold on. Hold on just a minute, let's see. I don't know what a BMW or a Lexus cost because I'm just a poor judge, you understand. But they tell me that if you buy a Lexus or a new Mustang or a new Super Sport like they have now, we're getting in $1,000 a month just for the payment of the car, easily. And so, you said you wanted just a simple little car? I'll tell you what I did. Got to tell you. Beg for it. And then what? And then what? 
What you say? Let's get him though. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I have, I have three children. And these children are older, and they went off, and I waited until they did something, and they said, you know, we can't get around without without a car. I didn't have any money to buy them a car, and they were already uh, past uh, college and stuff like that. And, and so what I did is I went around and looked for a, a simple car that was about five or six years old. It was, either was going to be a Chevrolet or a, a little Dodge, Dodge Patas, you know, like Dodge, and, uh, or a Ford. But you see, if you buy a used car, it's going to cost you five or six thousand dollars, but the banks won't loan you money for a long period of time. So if you buy a five or six year old car, a five or six year old car, you're going to have to pay it off in about two years. And that car is going to cost you about two hundred and fifty dollars. About two hundred and fifty dollars. Now, listen to this. Because you're not 25 years old. Because you're not 25 years old, you cannot, you cannot, in this state, have a vehicle unless you have insurance. Do you understand that? Insurance, okay? And it costs a lot of money. You know how much it will cost you? It will cost you $100. If you do not have insurance for your car, my understanding now is that the law of Texas precludes you, makes it impossible for you to have a car. You got to have insurance. So you have to have $100 insurance. <coughs> now, can you drive a car without gasoline? Of course not. All right, are we going to want to go to and from work, maybe go to a football game or something like that? It's going to take us a tank of gasoline. A tank of gasoline costs $25 a week. So for gasoline, we put down. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Credit card. The problem with a credit card is you got to pay it. Every month, not to take it away from you. So put down a hundred dollars. But look what we have. We have a house, and now we have a car that we can drive in. And you know, if you have a, a favorite novia or a favorite novio, we can take them around. But it's going to cost us how much? Four hundred fifty dollars. Four hundred fifty dollars. But you got a house. You got a car. Now, do you want to eat? Well, of course you want to eat. You know, what would you like to eat? Huh? You want to be an anorexic? Okay. What would, what would you like to eat? $600 a day, that's too much. So I'll tell you what we're going to do for our children. Of course, remember, we wanted to be alone, and we wanted to be independent. What we're going to do is we're going to eat tacos, frijoles, de carne picada, arroz, you know, and uh, we're going to eat cheap. We're going to eat cheap because I bet you anybody you ask in this room, anybody you ask in this room will tell you we can't eat very much for less than five or $600 a month. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a good supply of arroz, a good supply of papas, a good supply of frijoles, uh, and uh, tortillas, and tú le vas a hacer a mano, or somebody's going to make it for you. We're going to make it for you. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to eat. And maybe you even want to, want to go to a ball game or something, football game later on. When you go to high school and you finish there and then go out one night, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to eat. But that's at $75 a week. Is that right? You need milk, you need bread, you need all the compliments. But see, 75 times 4 is $300. But we got a house, we got a car, and we got food. Question? How about clothing? You know, we want to have something to wear. And you know, if you're going to go to work, 
you're going to go to work, you're going to have to wear something different every day. All right? Now, you see, you see that nice suit right here? You see this suit here? This, this suit right here costs $400. All right? And then let me show you now. You see this thing here? This thing here is mine. And I bought it in California. In California. And it's made out of, uh, you know what it costs me? For four hundred and fifty dollars. All right, four hundred and fifty dollars. Let me tell you. All right, now that's one item, right? One item. We need something for every day. We need go to Walmart. Go to Walmart. I got a better, I got a better deal for you. All right, I got a better deal than Walmart for you. You don't have as many of them here, but in Brownwood, Texas, we have. Alright? Okay? But in going to get ropa usada, remember we're going to have to do a lot of cleaning and we gotta be sure that if it's contaminated, it's decontaminated, and we gotta have enough like shoes, socks, underwear, dresses, because we're gonna go to work every day. So there's no way whatsoever. I'm not talking about buying suits. And I'm not talking about buying first class then. But there's no way in the world that we're not going to spend $200 a month. Because you got to dry it, you got you to clean it, you got to wash it, and the like. So put $200 a month. All right? But we got a house, we got a car, we got something to eat, we have clothing. Now, I got to ask you to do this for me, please. Do not get sick. And please, please. Nothing better go wrong. The car better not break down. The air conditioning better not break down. You better not have to need the, need the services of a plumber or the like because that costs money. Now, do we want to go on a date? Yes. Of course we do, right? At least once a week we want to spend it. Why? I guess if you go to the movie and you take him or her out for something to eat, what's it going to cost you at least? Why? Let's put down $50 a week, or $200 a month, so we can have a good time and for a good taste. Put down entertainment of $200. All right, now look at this. Look at this on this journey that you and I took. Now follow this very carefully. We're 23, we're single, we're not living at home, but we have freedom. We have our home, we have our car, we have food, we have clothes. Guess what all of that comes to? All used. A used trailer house, a used car, used clothing, and not eating very well. What does that come to? $1,600. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. All right, now listen to this. If, if, if you do not finish high school, you're going to earn minimum wage. Minimum wage right now is at $5 and it's never going to be over $5.35. And if you work 40 hours, you're going to be making $225 a week. In a one month period, if you do not finish high school, you're going to be earning four times $225, which is $900. In the United States of America, you pay taxes. You pay Social Security taxes and income taxes. Although you earned, how much was that, $800? $900, you're going to have to pay about $150 taxes. Social Security or whatnot. So now, you're going to net, you're going to net, uh, that's $800. You pay $150, that's $750. $750 a month. Seven hundred fifty dollars to sixteen hundred is what? Eight hundred fifty dollars. Eight hundred fifty dollars. Question. 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 If you do not finish high school, that's what you're going to earn. Where are you going to get the other seven hundred fifty dollars? Where are you going to get the other seven hundred fifty dollars? So you can live in a used house with a used car, buy used clothing, eat very poorly, and entertain yourself very cheaply. Where are you going to get it? Find another job? 
good idea, except for this. They'll be working 80 hours a week, and we're still going to be not making $1,600. Only 1500 And then you're going to work yourself to death. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Yeah, but who? Yeah, but who's going to marry somebody that works 80 hours a week? Ever think about that? Roommate. Roommate, hold on. We wanted to be alone. We said we wanted to be alone. Yeah, save the money in the bank. Where are you going to save money? Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you a story, all right? I'm going to tell you a story about a farmer. This farmer had a chicken farm, a gallinero, where he raised chickens. And the chickens, of course, laid eggs, and then he would sell chickens for market and the like. And as he went about his farm, he, he took, uh, he would look around, and he noticed that there was a nest, a needle of an eagle, a mother eagle, an aigla. And then he went over to where this nest was, and he noticed that this egg was about to actually break, hatch. Good, hatch. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept that. And then it did hatch, and then. A baby eagle. Now remember, eagles are monstrous animals, but the baby eagle was not. So he was very interested, and he would keep going to the nest. He kept going to the nest. And as he went to the nest, he saw that the, after two or three days, the mother eagle had left. There was no way that that little aguilita, that baby aguila, was going to survive without a mother. So what he did is he takes the aguilita, the baby eagle, and he takes it to his gallinero, and puts it in with a chicken, with a chicken. After all, all birds and fowl and all of those kind of animals eat the same. In other words, eagles and birds eat the same thing as gallinas do. And so the little eagle, in effect, started developing, growing and everything else, become big eagle, because they're big animals. <laughs> but it stayed with the chickens, and it behaved like a gallina. And it grew up, and it behaved like a gallina, never grew or anything like that. So then, one day, a, a, a biology teacher came to the farm. And he noticed there in the gallinero, he noticed that there was this eagle. I mean, it was a monstrous eagle. And he says to the farmer, hey, that's an eagle. He said, yes. Well, you know, eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. And then the farmer said, not this one. You see, this little eagle lost its mother. Mother never came back, and I brought it to the chicken farm and put it in with the chickens, and it behaved just like chickens. And, and the, the teacher said, no, oh, no, no, no. Eagles can't do that, because eagles were born to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. He said, let me show you. So the farmer was just looking. He was just looking. So he takes the eagle and grabs it in his hand, throws it up, and then the eagle wraps its wings once, gets to the ground, and runs back to the chicken. See, said the farmer, I told you, you know, I told you. And then the teacher said, no, 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 no. Eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. He said, not this one. He said, let me show you. So he goes up to the very apex, the very top of the, of the barn. And then the farmer was just looking. And he asked him, can I say this to so-and-so? So he goes all the way to the very top of the, of the, of the, of the, of the barn. He takes the eagle with him, and this time, he takes the eagle, throws it out, and it's coming down from the barn, flaps its wings once, flaps its wings twice, goes to the ground, back to the chicken, to the you know, back to the chickens. You see, said the teacher, it said the farmer to the teacher, I told you he couldn't fly. And no, no, no. Eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. I mean, that's what eagles are. He said, let me show you. He said, well, I hope you're not going to do this. So then the, 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 the biology teacher takes the eagle, and he goes to a very, very deep ravine where you can nearly, barely see the very bottom of it. And the farmer kept saying, certainly he's not going to do that. Certainly he's not going to do that. He said, watch this. So then the farmer, rather the biology teacher, takes the eagle, throws it down. The eagle starts falling, started flapping its wings. Flapping its wings, flapping its wings. 
kept flapping its wings, started flying, started flying. And that eagle would then go past the gallineros, past where he had been raised with the chickens, and he would look down, but he never, never became a chicken again because he discovered he was an eagle. You know what the moral to that story is? No. The moral to that story is that everybody in this room is born an eagle. And sometimes, sometimes people around us, and sometimes we ourselves make our thing, ourselves think that we're gallinas and we're chickens. And nobody, nobody is born a gallina. Everybody is born an eagle. Everybody is born an eagle. And everybody up here can do what anybody else can do. There'll be dozens of stories that could be told to you by people that I know. Ask your teacher sometimes to tell you people that they know. But you see, I'm a little older than most of the people that are here. And I told you what my name was, right? But I know this person that I'm going to tell you of very, very well. And he was born in the valley. And he was born in a family of nine. His mother did not know English. She had come from Mexico. She did not know English. And he was the number eight child of nine. He had five brothers. And at one time, all six brothers slept in the same bed because things were pretty hard in those days. And then when you were born, he, you know, his last name was sounded funny when you pronounce it in English. When you had that kind of last name, you weren't supposed to finish junior high, which is now middle school, much less high school. And so this person, one time, when he was about 11, 12, 13 years old, went to see some people, some people speak at a political thing, you know, where people talk about politicians are. And there was this doctor and this lawyer that spoke there. And he was young, his father took him there, and he liked what this attorney said and the way this attorney spoke. And then and there, he decided he wanted to be an attorney. And everybody around him would say, there's no way. After all, you know, you're not even supposed to put in junior high. He wanted to be an attorney. He, 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 he had this, this, this idea, this dream, that he wanted to be an attorney. And it did do him pretty well because, you know, he said he was an eagle. Didn't think he was an eagle. And then, never having lost sight of that, he went on to high school. In high school, he had a good time. Forgot he was an eagle. He had such a good time that he went to high school an extra year, and there was a teacher that once came to say to him, you're never going to amount to anything. Never lost sight of a dream that he wanted to be an attorney. Never did that. And although he went to high school an extra year, he still wanted to go to college because he wanted to be an attorney. And teachers and everybody around him, and he himself sometimes gave up on the proposition. But it's high school, you know, even though it went another year, because, you know, up here, all of us are eagles, contrary to what everybody thinks. And I got to tell you a, a secret that's very well kept. You know, when it comes to college, you know, the biggest secret that never told is that all you have to do to finish college is know how to read, you know how to do that right. You know how to write, you know how to add, you know how to subtract. That's all you need to do to finish college. Am I wrong? That's all you need to do to finish college. So he goes to college, and he had to go to the local college because remember that he was number eight out of nine, and all of his brothers had gone to this junior college, which was local, and they didn't have any money to go anyplace else. So he finished his two years. Then he went to the University of Texas, and he, he was going to drop a class because of the fact that you had to, to go to school, to college so many years before you went to the law school that he had already done all of the coursework. Oh, incidentally, this fellow that went to high school an extra year, he's through college. The one that the teacher said couldn't do it, he's through college. Why? Because he could write, he could read, he could add, he could subtract. You don't need to do anything else to finish college. So he goes to the University of Texas and he drops this course. And this professor tells him, do not study law. Oh, that devastated him. Because you're never going to make it. Oh, that just, this was the end of his life because that was his dream. And everybody said it was never going to happen. 
So then he went to the military, because in those days you had to go to the army, came back, went to law school, and guess what? That guy that whose mother didn't know English, and who teacher said was never going to make it, didn't have any difficulty at all, even through law school. Why? Because he knew how to read, write, add, and subtract. His dream came true. He became a lawyer. His dream came true. He became a lawyer. Then the one thing about that he enjoyed about law is that you can help people. You saw the guys this morning. You know, you can help people. And he really enjoyed what he was doing. After a while, people saw fit to elect him to a local office. And then they even elected him to another office. And about, let's see, is this 1997? <coughs> let's see, about 17 years ago, this individual gets a call from the office of the President of the United States. And they ask this individual whether he would accept a certain position. And he said he would. And after that, the Senate of the United States confirmed him to this position. And every day, this little Mexicanito, every day, not too far from here, in a very beautiful courtroom, every morning, they knock this way. And they say, Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. United States District Court and for the Southern District of Texas, holding session in Brownsville. The Honorable Limon B. Bella, Judge Presiding, is now open pursuant to adjournment. God save these United States and this Honorable Court. And they said he couldn't do it. And he said, told himself he couldn't do it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. Don't you ever let anybody, I mean anybody, not your father, not your mother, not your teachers, not your friends, not your relatives, for God's sakes, not yourself. Don't you ever tell, let anybody say it and tell you that you can't because you most certainly are an eagle. All of us are eagles. And there's living evidence all around us of people who had it rougher than you and I had. That it can be done. You know, talking about that judge, whose mother didn't know English, and the teacher said we're never going to make it, and everything else because they would look at it, he earns $135,000 a year. And you know what? That's not enough. You know why? He earns that because of the fact he finished high school. Querer es poder. It's just that simple. And if you don't believe that, you tell him that in the mom, Bartolome, Bella, Cardenas, Cardenas, and Rosa told you so. Because you're Aguilas, and don't you ever forget that.